Hi, my name is Dr. Jessica Turner Scoff, and I am the triologist or science communication leader at the Morton Arboretum. I've been there since January 2016, but before that, I got my undergraduate at Muskingum University in Conservation Science, my master's from University of Maryland College Park in Conservation Biology and Sustainable Development, and my PhD at West Virginia University in Biology, where I studied the conservation of the rare plant American ginseng. So I graduated from the 23rd grade. And um, like I said, I've been at the Morton Arboretum since January 2016, where I get to take all the great tree science, conservation, and horticulture that we do and translate it for whichever audience we're working with. I'm actually the recipient of the American Horticultural Society's Emerging Horticultural Professional for 2020, and I just had the best job in the world. So let's dive right on in and talk about the benefits of trees for livable and sustainable communities. So let me pull up this PowerPoint. Okay, great. So yes, and we are recording. So today, I'm hoping that we walk away from today, you know, we all know in our hearts and in our heads about how amazing trees are, um, but I really want to be able to provide you with some of the science behind that why they're incredible, why they make our lives better. So you can go home or, well, you might be home now uh, and talk to your family and friends about the, some of these facts about what trees are doing for us every single day. Um, you know, you don't even have to wait for them to ask. You can just find a way to interject it in every conversation. That's typically what I do and it's been working out great. So, <laughs> so let's just jump right on in and uh, let's talk about the benefits of trees. This has been a project that I've been working on since I basically started at the Morton Arboretum, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay. We are in the era of humans. Now, this is something, um, you know, scientists have actually coined the term the Anthrop Anthropocene to label this geological age because every single aspect of the globe has been impacted by humans. Everything from, you know, you don't have to look much further than the extreme example of the built environment. So anything that's suburban, urban, uh, that's different than the wild counterpart um, is the built environment. So this is an image of New York City and, you know, you can really see the impact that humans have had. The built environment is only going to get bigger. So this is a figure from the UN. By 2050, 66% of the world's population is projected to be urban. Some areas of the world are growing faster than others, um, but let's focus uh, for a second on the United States. Well, really quickly, this shows city populations from 500 to 750,000, all the way the square represents 10 million, and the growth rate, uh, the green is less than 1%, red is increase of 5%. But like I said, let's focus a little bit on the United States. So Noack and Walton did a projection of what this will look like for the United States of America. And all the counties are outlined. If they're white, it's about zero to 5% urban. And if it's red, it's 80 to 100% urban. You can see here in Chicago, we are already substantially um, you know, urban. Our urban center is very large as it is. But by 2050, it's only going to get larger. The new normal is the great migration from small cities into bigger urban uh, suburban conglomerates. So, you know, there's a whole host of challenges associated with these built environments, everything from increase in air pollution and water pollution to loss of biodiversity. So if we're not planning ahead, if we're not taking that into consideration and not planting and protecting trees in nature, we're going to have a lot of issues ahead of us. Because trees are very much a valuable part of the solution to make the world a greener, healthier, and more beautiful place if I may quote the Morton Arboretum's mission. So trees are part of this solution. And you know, today's talk's really gonna be focusing on a literature review that I did with Dr. Nicole Cavender, our Vice President of Science and Conservation. And since I, like, as I mentioned, since I started at the Morton Arboretum, one of my jobs has been to find literature that really focuses on the benefits that trees provide. Really removing extraneous variables such as socioeconomics and demographics, and really focusing on trees and nature specifically and what it provides to humans. So we wrote a literature review, The Benefits of Trees for Livable and Sustainable Communities, uh, that was published in Plants People Planet in 2019. And you know, over 170 citations that really illustrate 
that trees can really make a difference in making our lives better. Now, since we are scientists or trained as scientists, uh, we wanted to build on the framework of others. And so we put this in the context of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Now, the UN Sustainable Development Goals are um, universally agreed upon goals to help make the world better. Uh, this is everything from eliminating hunger to, you know, making um, sustainable cities and communities to improving life on land. Now, nature-based solutions or ways to incorporate plants and uh, healthy ecosystems as a way to meet these goals has been suggested before, but our literature review was the first to look at trees and also um, highlight that trees can help us meet 15 of the 17 goals. And so today we're gonna to be talking about how these benefits fall into five separate categories. These include climate change mitigation and habitat, health and well-being, cognitive development and education, economy and resources, and finally green infrastructure. So we'll go through each of these categories and we'll talk about the goals that align with those categories. We will dive into some considerations regarding the research and how we can think about our cities of the future. And finally, we'll end with what you can do and resources that can help you do it. So here we go. So if we're looking at um, the first category, which is climate change mitigation and habitat, trees can have a direct impact on storing and sequestering carbon. The research is still developing on the, the scale that trees can have on directly mitigating the impact of climate change by both taking up carbon um, and also then storing it in its tissue. But ever since, even since this paper was published in 2019, there's been new research out that looks very promising that this could be something that could have a large impact on um, reducing the direct impact of climate change. But we do know for sure that trees are very important for providing habitat. They are the backbone of the terrestrial ecosystem. So they're providing habitat for other plants, organisms, birds, insects. So they have a really large impact on the biodiversity of an ecosystem. Stagall found that the large tree in the park provides substantially more habitat for biodiversity um, and increases the biodiversity as compared to smaller trees or like, yeah. So that's something, having those larger trees, it uh, can be very beneficial. Now, one of the ways that trees can help uh, reduce the indirect impact of climate change is reducing the urban heat island effect. Now, the urban heat island is, um, you know, when you go outside in the summer at a city, it's going to be hotter than if you were out in a more rural environment. It's because cities retain heat. So this is an image from city of Melbourne. And you know the orange is around 61 degrees Celsius all the way to the blue, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Now the city of Melbourne's a very hot city. So if you're standing out in the sun on the, um, in the city on the summer day, it's going to be 61 degrees Celsius, uh, which is approximately 142 degrees Fahrenheit. However, if you're in the shade of a tree, it's going to be closer to about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty substantial difference in temperature. Um, but this isn't just anecdotal. So at the Morton Arboretum, we are the Center for Tree Science, and one of our fantastic scientists, a forest ecologist, Dr. Christy Rollinson, she did an analysis of 94 cities across the globe to look at the tree effect on temperature. And this is, uh, you know, the darker the brown the circle is, the warmer it is, the bluish green is the colder, uh, cooler, the effect of trees on temperature. And what we're able to, what this shows is that there is an ecological and statistically significant impact of these trees on the temperature of these cities. And, in some cities, this tree effect of temperature can be negative nine degrees Celsius, um, but the average is about 1.9 degrees Celsius. So having the trees help the urban heat island effect, that's substantial, especially for, you know, vulnerable populations are really impacted by summer heat. And if we can keep our cities cooler, there's gonna be a lot of health benefits associated with that. We'll talk more about that in the next slide. But the climate change mitigation habitat category shows that trees can help promote the goals of good health and well-being, climate action, and life on land. 
So moving on to health and well-being. We, we talked a little bit about temperature, but let's talk about another huge impact on human health, which is air pollution. The jury is like in with this. Like air pollution is very detrimental to people. It can cause problems from increasing your blood pressure to increasing cardiovascular problems, everything from heart attacks to heart uh, cardiovascular disease. And ultimately, air pollution is linked to mortality. So air pollution can cause a lot of problems for human health and well-being. But trees can provide a solution at removing air pollution. Not only can they remove it through gaseous exchange by taking into the leaves, but they can physically remove it as well by trapping it on their leaves or their bark. So this study, um, NOAC et al. looked at uh, Canadian cities and found they get carbon, uh, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, which is the really teeny tiny stuff that stays in your lungs, gets in there and stays in there, it's really bad, ozone, um, and found that trees in Canadian cities, 86 Canadian cities, removed 16,500 tons of air pollution in 2010 alone. That's a, that's a huge amount. But let's look at an American, a uh, United States example. So we have metric tons of pollution, of those same pollutants, removed by US urban street trees. So this is every year, the street trees in the United States remove 711,000 metric tons. Huge number. And if we were to pay to have this service done, uh, it's 3.8 billion, so it's the three comma club. <laughs> That's a tremendous value that trees are giving us just by existing. But let's take a second and look at that 711,000 metric tons because that's a really big number and that's really hard to conceptualize, especially when you consider that these things are so small you cannot see them with the human eye. Like you need to have like equipment and all of that to be able to actually see this pollution. So just how much is 711,000 metric tons? Well, if we take the biggest animal, which is a male blue whale, that's around 300,000 pounds, huge. That's 136.1 metric tons. So the same weight equivalent that urban US street trees remove each year is the equivalent of 5,224 male blue whales of pollution. That's crazy, especially like the teeny tiny like particulate matter, like that's the amount combined. But again, 5,224 whales, that's a really big number as well. Like how can you conceptualize that? Well, the right there is 5,224 dots. So just imagine a male blue whale of pollution for each of those dots. Pretty substantial. Also, in addition to the um, removing air pollution, there's actually, you know, Ulrich did a study that was really famous. Uh, it's really famous for it's one of the first of its kind showing the benefits of a view of trees from your hospital can provide. So if you have patients' rooms that are overlooking trees versus patient rooms that are overlooking a brick wall, and I will really quickly say that this study did a great job of remo removing extraneous variables, really focused on patients with the same diagnosis, the same color of room, um, like all the detail that went into making sure that it was just focusing on the view of trees versus the view of brick wall is astounding. What Ulrich found was that people healed faster and better if they had the green view. They also needed fewer heavy duty painkillers and they also had fewer negative notes from the nurses. Now that's pretty substantial to benefits. So I've talked about you know, air pollution and now you know, being in the hospital. So what, what happens if we lose all those trees? Um, you know, we look at the, how the benefits all of, the, all of them together look What's it look like if you don't have those trees? Well, never let a good crisis go to waste. The uh, Emerald Ash Borer sadly showed us what can happen. So the Emerald Ash Borer was of course an invasive um, that ash trees used to be one of the most commonly planted street trees. So you can see here, you know, beautiful uh, corridors on roads. Um, you know, these photos were taken the same time of year and you can see what that impact of the Emerald Ash Borer had. In Chicago, it's estimated we lost 13 million trees due to the emerald ash borer. But scientists got really clever and they used this as a way to understand what, how trees are impacting us. So Donovan et al, 
found that you can actually trace mortality related to the mortality in trees in communities. So trees that had a lot of ash trees die, there was actually an increase in human mortality. But not only was there an increase in mortality, but you can actually trace crime rates. Um, so this was a study looking at crimes per block group and over the years, and there was, you know, again, controlling for variables, an increase in violent crimes and property crimes in relation to the emerald ash borer coming through and killing ash trees. Now there's a couple different theories on why this might be the case. You know, there's the idea that the cues to care. So if you have a community that looks really run down, it sends a signal to criminals like, hey, nefarious acts can take place here. No one's caring, no one's paying attention, no problem. Uh, the other idea is that, you know, there's other research that shows a view of trees from your home can actually reduce um, can actually reduce uh, aggression and violence in that household, sometimes by up to 25%. So looking at trees can have a calming impact on people. And so, you know, that's another theory as to why this might be the case. But regardless, it shows that there's uh, an improvement in mental and physical health, as well as a reduction of crime and violence um, in response to having trees, well-maintained trees. Cooley did a really interesting study looking at community ties. So when I say community ties, that's like social cohesion, people getting along, people being outside together, and trees can help support that. So Cooley looked at this uh, Chicago parks and found that Chicago parks with bigger trees encouraged more people to be using the parks and a greater, greater diversity of ages. So increased childhood uh, supervision, um, which can have a big impact on, you know, kids, if they're left to their own devices, can get up to things. So, you know, it's more than just mental and physical health. It's the health of a community um, that can really be benefited by trees. Trees can actually contribute to cognitive development and education as well. They can help everything from increasing student engagement, attention, test scores, and future goals. This study done in 2010 looked at schools throughout Michigan, and they looked at the views from the cafeteria, everything ranging from a really built environment, um, as you can see here, to a more, much more natural environment, as you can see there. What they found is that students that had the natural views were more likely to have better test scores, a higher graduation rate, and more likely to be planning on attending a four-year college. Again, this is with all these additional variables removed, really focusing on the green view. But it's not just a green view, it's a natural view. Because if students were viewing a just a straight field, like a football field or a soccer field, they actually, that was detrimental to their growth and development. So when we're thinking about schools and education, we should also be thinking about what does the site look like? What are students able exposed to? This study done in 2008 um, was really clever. It used the same group of students um, seven to 12 year olds, and it gave them walks at three separate times uh, over the course of weeks, uh, same time, but over the course of a couple weeks, having them um, in a park with big grass, like grassy park with big trees to a really well-kept neighborhood and then a well-kept urban center. And then after about 20 minute walk, it measured their concentration. And these were children with attention um, deficit disorders. What they found was, the students were their own control, and the measure of concentration was substantially higher if they had previously been in a park. So again, this quality education really can be impacted by having trees, uh, having access to trees. And as we all know, there's many trickle-down effects of having quality education and having that opportunity available to students. Trees provide a lot for the economy and also with resources. Now, here in the United States, we don't typically think about trees providing us with resource security, but they really can. Uh, if, if harvested sustainably, trees can provide us with food, with medicine, with um, firewood, with timber. So there's a lot of different things that trees can provide us that we don't always think about, but other areas of the world do. Uh, this study done by, uh, uh, this study in 2016, uh, looked at the legacy effects of the Berlin Wall. 
they found was that the east side of the wall, there were far more fruit trees than to this day than the west side because people needed the fruit trees for substance. So they were cared for, they planted more. And, you know, I think it's just a really interesting look at how that can impact and shape a city, providing people with nutrient dense um, food or medicine. They can also provide a lot of economic benefits and ecosystem services. Now, ecosystem services are what healthy ecosystems provide to people. Um, but economic benefits, a uh, properly planted tree can reduce your energy, your energy bills. Um, they can help improve the value of your home. And uh, let's talk a little bit about this Wolf 2005 study. She did um, survey work looking at how people perceived a shopping center, looking at um, four different perception categories. What she found was that people were more likely to rank the shopping center as being more comfortable, being having better upkeep, the merchants were nicer, and the quality of products were better if there were trees in the shopping center. So, you know, we're a consumer-based economy. So having your consumer want to spend more money, being more drawn to your shopping center, that's a very important, um, that's a very important thing that can help build um, build an economy. McPherson et al. found that for every dollar that you invest in tree care and maintenance, the ecosystem services or what trees provide for us, like managing stormwater, reducing pollution, um, the benefits that trees provide can have up to a 300% return on investment. So, you know, when you talk to anybody or any of your investments, if you're like, this can be a 300% return on investment, um, you would be crazy not to take that deal. That's insane. So, so, you know, we really need to be thinking about our trees as an investment moving forward because of all that they do for us. Trees are a really important part of green infrastructure. They help, as I mentioned, manage stormwater, reduce pollution, et cetera. They do, and you know, a caveat here is that it does need to be incorporated with gray infrastructure. We need to be designing our cities in a way that trees can grow, they can mature, and they can provide us, they can grow to maturity so they can provide us with the maximum number of benefits. Um, so it's really this lovely, um, you know, cooperation where we need to have green and gray infrastructure working together to help make our cities better. Because when they do, we can meet a lot of these goals. Now there's some important considerations regarding this research that we're gonna talk about really quick. First of all, there's methodological considerations. Absolutely. There needs to be more long-term longitudinal studies. So following people over time, there needs to be more experimental studies. Ultimately, what I would like to see is more cooperation between social scientists and biologists and ecologists working together to truly understand the impact that trees provide. There's spatial and temporal differences. Now a tree that's planted in Chicago will not have the same benefits across seasons. It will not have the same benefits as winter in winter as it will in summer. Um, but that, you know, a tree planted in Chicago will have different benefits and uh, impact of benefits as compared to a tree in the tropics. So it is just something to consider, um, you know, regarding this research. There's within and between species differences as well. So that's one of the things I'm gonna talk a little bit later about diversity of trees. You know, some trees are really good at removing air pollution. Some are really good at removing storm or managing storm water. So if you have all of one species planted in a city, um, not only will that make more, you more susceptible to an invasive pest or pathogen like the emerald ash borer, but you also won't be maximizing the benefits. You wanna diversify that portfolio if I may go back to that investment comparison. There's also within species differences, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. There's disservices associated with trees. You know, they can be messy, uh, they can be considered messy, et cetera. Um, but you know, the research shows that any disservices associated with trees, most people are really okay with that when you compare that to the benefits. And you know, xeric and dry environments may be areas that need trees the most, but they may not be the condu most conducive um, to growing those trees. So, you know, again, it's incorporating the gray infrastructure that can help support the green infrastructure um, and vice versa that can really maximize these benefits. 
because it's not just about planting trees. Now, anytime I see, you know, one of those million tree plantings or we're planting a trillion trees, that's great. I, yes, let's plant trees. That's something I so firmly believe in. But are we planting the right species in the right place? And are we giving them the right care afterwards? Because what happens when those trees go into the ground if they're not suited for that environment or they're not being taken care of? We need to make sure we're being really efficient with our resources and understanding how the trees, where they will grow best and what we can do to help them grow. Another thing we need to think about is that trees are an investment in a community. It is so easy to identify disenfranchised communities through aerial photos. Um, looking at the canopy. And you can, I suggest you all spend some time on Google Earth uh, or Google Maps. Um, you can see the difference in communities based on um, tree cover canopy alone. And if we want to have a sustainable city or sustainable communities, we need to make sure trees are equitably distributed throughout that community. Otherwise, we're leaving people behind and they're not getting the benefits that trees can provide. You know, in addition, one of the first things that always gets cut from budgets is tree care and plantings, which again, well-maintained trees are huge investments to society. So it's something that we need to make sure that we're paying attention to. Because I think we all know what uh, we would like to live in. I think it's probably pretty universal. We all wanna live in lush, beautiful green places. And if we're not planning our cities, thinking ahead of time and really finding ways to maximize how we can put, where we put trees and how they're growing, people are gonna miss out on a lot of opportunities. So you can see this is an image from India. There's a tree, there's a couple trees here and there, but this is a lot different than, you know, a, a community that has a very, um, robust urban forestry program, for sure. Ultimately, bigger trees provide more benefits. So this is a tree that I pass when I walk to the train to take my commute into Morton. Um, you know, these trees are kind of treated like annuals. <laughs> um, I've seen so many of them planted in the short time that I've, the four years or so, uh, they get planted almost every other year. And that's because they don't live. Um, there's standing water, there's litter, there's an electrical outlet. They get exposed to way too much salt. Um, salt can be very beneficial on the sidewalks, but it needs to be applied correctly. And there's a whole method about it. And I can tell you that these people uh, do not apply it appropriately. There's litter in the branches. I mean, this tree is not going to live long. In fact, you know, the, the science shows that. Uh, trees and cities, there's about a 50% survival in the first five years. And these trees have a half-life of 10 to 15 years in the inner city. 10 to 15 years. And it really all comes down to how we're taking care of them because this will not provide the same benefits as trees in this community. You know, I like this, this community a lot because there's, um, you know, more mature trees. You can see there's a diversity of trees. It's, uh, these trees are really prioritized and cared for. And it's not crazy to think that this, your city can look like this because this is only 0.2 miles away. These trees uh, can be found. But, you know, even this, uh, this beautiful green lush image, it's not enough because we need our trees getting as big as possible. We need to have diversity of our ages in our trees. So not just super young trees, not super old trees. We need to be planning accordingly. <laughs> Okay, that's the joy of uh, working from home. Uh, Haas, it's okay. Haas. All right. <laughs> My dog is very sweet and protective. Um, so, so bigger trees provide more benefits. So um, our course of action to maximize the benefits of these trees, you know, I'm going to start with kind of a holistic, like what we can do, and then we're going to go into what you can do. So first of all, we need to plant the right tree in the right place and give it the right care. Because if we aren't helping our trees reach maturity, we're wasting resources, we're wasting time, capacity. We need to be taking care of our trees um, because that's what's gonna make the difference because we need to have bigger, more mature, healthy trees to improve the lives of people. 
we need to be combining green and great infrastructure in cities and trees, it is a necessity that trees be included in city budgets. Trees are an investment and they should be treated as such. So, you know, it's not as much, it's not enough that, you know, you just plant them and then walk away. No, like any investment, trees need to be taken care of to appreciate in value because if you don't care for an investment, it will depreciate in value over time. And finally, we need to support a new era of horticulture. Now this new era of horticulture needs to consider the needs of the built environment and how trees can best grow um, for people and the planet. And that's something that we're working on at the Morton Arboretum, our Center for Tree Science, is we're working to understand how to best grow trees in these, um, in these very foreign environments. All right, so that's a little bit about what we can do holistically. Now let's focus on what we can do um, as individuals. First of all, if I ask you to think of the biggest crop in America, I'll give you a couple seconds, what is it going to be? Well, I um, bet a lot of people thought it's corn or soybeans. What about lawns? Yes, lawns are three times the size of any other crop. In fact, it's around 63,000 square miles. It's over the size of Texas. Now, a beautiful lawn is a thing of beauty. Um, it is a monoculture though, which means it's only one species. So we need to get a little more creative, maybe put in a pollinator garden, put in some trees and shrubs, um, makes the birds happy. It'll improve, the, you'll get shade. If you plant it in the right place, you can reduce your home bill. So just think, uh, your energy bill. So just think of ways that you can incorporate um, na nature into your landscape beyond just a lawn. You can plant diversity and with a special emphasis on hardy species. So as far as diversity is concerned, um, you know, having numerous different species, like I mentioned earlier, will help be like serve as a protection against an invasive pest or pathogen. Um, we've learned a lot since lining our trees, our streets with one tree, like with the emerald ash borer. Um, so plant a mixture. It'll give you different benefits as well. And um, if you plant hardy species that'll be more resistant to path and path pathogens, that's huge. And we also ask that you kind of consider, you know, future climates um, when you're planting your species and pick ones that'll be less vulnerable. You can join Open Land Tree Keepers. It's a great organization that you can get trained on how to take care of the forest in your, the urban forest or all of the trees growing in your neighborhood. Um, you know, be an advocate for trees that way. You can reduce, reuse, and recycle. That's a huge one. It's something that, you know, the, the environmental footprint that we have has a direct impact on the health of the planet. So if we can make changes and modifications to our everyday behavior, we can um, really help improve the health and well-being of the, of the world. And ultimately, that's something that can be very good for trees. You can support the Morton Arboretum. Now, I mean support in the broadest sense. Become a member, visit during dog days, take a class. These are all things that you can do that will have a huge impact on making the world a greener, healthier, and more beautiful place. When you're supporting the Morton Arboretum, you're not only supporting our fantastic education program that's helping create tree advocates, um, but you're also supporting our science and conservation. And so, you know, we're, the, as I've mentioned, the Center for Tree Science. We're working to understand how trees, how we can best uh, develop the built environment so trees can grow and reach maturity, and so we can get those benefits. We're trying to understand trees as individuals, trees as a collective in a forest. Um, what's happening below ground? There's so many mysteries associated with trees, but that's a whole other webinar. So um, <laughs> if you like this one today, you know, maybe send an email, and try to get a, get a different one with uh, that topic. Um, we also are doing uh, conservation, both locally um, throughout the Chicago area. We're trying to improve the canopy by 2050 you know, planting more species, a diversity of species, planting trees in general and taking care of them so everybody can get their benefits equitably throughout the region. To a globally, we're working to conserve trees. You know, we've got partners all over the world and we're working to make sure the world is, a, um, that no tree goes extinct in this world. So any little action that you take um, with the Morton Arboretum, you're having a huge ripple, ripple effect and you're ultimately being a tree champion. And I really like this quote by Emerson. It's the creation of a thousand forests 
is in one acorn. So every little thing that you do, every little acorn you plant, there's multitudes of impacts that can come from it. So, you know, when you're thinking about trees and you're thinking about the environment, um, you know, take care of your tree, water your tree, mulch it. Um, there's a lot of different resources, which I'll talk about in a minute, that help, can help you turn that acorn into a forest. Because trees are a really valuable part of the solution to make the world a healthier, greener, and more beautiful place. In fact, it can help us reach 15 of the 17 most pressing, pressing issues for our society. So with that, I'd like to thank these people, especially my co-author and Dr. Nicole Cavender. And you can find the Plants People Planet journal article that uh, this webinar was based on um, at this link or QR code. And you can always pause this webinar to take a picture of that and uh, visit. It is open access, so you should have no problems getting a hold of it. There's also some additional resources. Um, Dr. Nicole Cavender and I were interviewed for um, a short WBEZ Worldview interview in August of 2019. Uh, in a more long form, I was interviewed on the In Defense of Plants podcast about how cities need trees. And if you're interested more in the more technical side of things, uh, the Botanical Garden Conservation International, they came up with a fantastic technical review. Um, they're one of our partners on a lot of different tree conservation work. Um, but it's the role of botanical gardens in urban greening and conserving urban biodiversity. So that's, uh, you know, showing kind of it highlights a lot of the work that we've done and work that some of our partners are doing. Now, if you want something more of the Morton Arboretum focused, um, we do have this here. Oh, this is blocking the website. There we go. We do have um, a lot of different resources for you. First of all, our website, you can find anything you need from the Morton Arboretum, uh, you know, classes, um, you have an event there, what's going on, when's going on, um, you know, it's uh, even uh, deep dives into our science and conservation as well. If you're interested in learning how to take care of uh, plants better, um, the Plant Clinic is a fantastic resource, um, free, and they'll help you with anything you need to know about plants. They help me all the time with everything from my house plants to what plants I can plant in my garden. And so, you know, they're a great resource as well. If you're looking to plant a tree, you should always check out the Northern Illinois Tree Selector. I like to think of this kind of like online dating for finding your soulmate of a tree. Uh, you go onto the website, you click the boxes for what you're looking for in a tree. Um, you know, what's the, what's the, where you're gonna plant it? What's the, you know, environment like there? What, what are some things that you're looking for? Like, are you looking for really good fall color? Are you looking for beautiful spring flowers? Those are things that um, you'll be able to click. Don't click all of them because you won't get any matches, so don't be too picky. Uh, <laughs> instead, you know, focus on the main priorities. And you know, it's a great way to get uh, think outside of the standard, you know, five or so trees that you probably think of, and find a way to plant the right tree in the right place. And then the plant clinic can give tell you how to give it the right care. Sterling Morton Library is another fantastic resource for. Um, any sort of book or uh, research that you need um, regarding plants. And finally, take a class. You know, this is our adult education link, but it is a great way to get involved. Anything from, you know, learning more about the natural ecosystem to learning how oaks make whiskey better to yoga. So there's a lot of different opportunities. And again, anytime you support the Morton Arboretum, you're making the world a greener, healthier, and more beautiful place. So thank you so much today for being a part of this webinar. I hope that you uh, got a lot out of it and I know that uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. So sorry about my dog. Haas, you wanna come here? Haas, come here. One second. Here's the culprit. He's really cute, you can't be mad at him, right? So. All right. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.